So we've seen images like this, and this, and this, all of the White Tower. But just how big is that thing? How many people can fit inside? Today, we're going to answer those questions and some more as I tell you seven things you might not know about the White Tower from the Wheel of Time. So before answering all of your questions from the Wheel of Time, make sure to smash that like button on this video. It helps others on YouTube see this type of content. So if you like Wheel of Time content, take that simple step and hit the like button. Also pay attention here where you're going to see a spoiler warning for the content that I'm talking about. But let's go ahead and get into seven things that you may not know about the White Tower from the Wheel of Time. So when I think of the White Tower and all the depictions on TV and in art, I typically envision the White Tower towering over the island of Tarvalin and thinking of all the Aes Sedai that are moving through its halls. But did you know that the White Tower is more than just the tower that gives it its name? It's an entire complex sitting at the heart of Tarvalin. Now inside this complex is the tower, obviously, but also two wings connected to the tower that are also gigantic. One of these wings is the Accepted's Quarters, and the other is dedicated to novices. Also attached to the complex is the Tower Library, which is absolutely massive and serves as the largest library in the known world of the Wheel of Time. It sits directly behind the tower, while the novice and Accepted wings are right next to it. In addition to the wings, the tower, and the library, there is also a subterranean level beneath the tower built into the bedrock of the island. This is said to go deep into the ground, hundreds of feet actually, and serves as storage, cells for imprisonment, and where some of the Terangrial are stored and used. But that's not it. In addition to all the gardens and fountains, there are also the stables, a three-story building that houses all of the horses for the tower and all the guardsmen. There's also the warder's practice field, where warders and guardsmen practice their swords and weapons. The guardsmen's barracks is a large building that houses the tower guard, as well as many of the warders who don't stay with their eyes to die. There's also the trader's court, which is a large amphitheater-style area where the gentling and public addresses are held for the tower, and it can bring in, like, everybody. Needless to say, the White Tower grounds hold far more than simply the White Tower. So can something be simultaneously bigger and smaller than you thought at the same time? When I was first reading the books, I had this concept that the White Tower was some impossibly high structure comparable to a massive skyscraper from today. The truth of the White Tower is that while it's a large building, it's nowhere near as tall as I had imagined, and it is certainly not as tall as a skyscraper from today. But where the White Tower isn't as tall as I thought, the building itself is absolutely gigantic larger than I ever pictured if you look at its interior space. So let's take a look at some of the dimensions. The White Tower is measured at 600 feet tall and 300 feet wide at its base. It tapers up to 200 feet at its top and it has a flat roof for observation. Now it's cylindrical in shape, which means that the diameter of the building is actually 300 feet. The two wings protruding from its sides that house the novice and accepted quarters, they are each 150 feet tall and have a 300 foot diameter as well. So additionally, part of the complex also includes the White Tower Library, which is described as massive as well, equaling, if not exceeding, the accepted and novice wings. So let's make some comparisons here. First of all, the White Tower stands about half as tall as the Empire State Building in New York. That's quite a tall structure, double the height of the Statue of Liberty, but not as tall as one of the tallest buildings in the world. Where the White Tower shows its size is in its internal square footage. The White Tower itself has 40 levels, and each of the wings have 15 levels. That gives the main White Tower structure roughly 2.8 million square feet of space. And then if you include the wings and the library, the entire complex has near 6 million square feet of space. And that's not even including the subterranean levels of the tower, which are thought to extend hundreds of feet into the bedrock. This is almost as large of an internal space as as the current largest office building in the world, the Pentagon. This is an incredibly massive building that would provide ample space for pretty much anything they want to do inside, and then some. So the White Tower is massive, like massive, massive. But how many people can fit inside of it? 
Well, that number is kind of crazy. Now, we know from the books that there are near 1,200 Aes Sedai at the start of the story, and the White Tower easily holds all of them. And we are told that it's built to house near 3,000 Aes Sedai, so you would think it would be easy to do that, given how big it is that we just talked about, it, and you would be right. Simply based on housing code in California as a baseline, I just found this, you could technically house 56,000 people in the main White Tower, not including the novice quarters or the accepted apartments, and have that be considered up to code. And yes, there are of course meeting rooms and offices, and it's simply not a housing complex, but that is a staggering number of people to fit in a building that could technically house all of them. Now, given the number of Aes Sedai currently, each Aes Sedai has approximately 2,300 square feet of space, the size of a medium-sized home in the United States, all to themselves in the tower. And considering each Aes Sedai does not need their own kitchen or multiple bedrooms, that's a staggering amount of space. What that tells me is that if you were to walk into the White Tower, it would have the sense of grandeur and size that would just blow your mind. Uh, I imagine going there would be very intimidating, walking into not only the government for the Aes Sedai, but also a building that projects that much size. The White Tower serves as not only the living quarters for all of the Aes Sedai, but also as the administrative offices for the city of Tarvalon, government for the Aes Sedai, meeting halls, and a home to the Ajas. The tower is broken into 40 distinct levels, with the first 20 being home to administrative offices, classrooms, audience chambers, and dining rooms. The main kitchens and dining rooms are on the first floor of the tower, and they serve meals to novices and accepted in their own dining room, and then there's a separate dining room for Aes Sedai. Also on the first floor of the tower is the Mistress of Novices' office, and the testing chamber where novices get tested to become accepted. There's also a visitor's hall on this level for visitors to the tower. Now the hall of the tower, the largest room in the White Tower, is housed on the second and third floor of the tower. It's large enough to fit all of the Aes Sedai that the tower could potentially hold, around 3,000, and it could fit them in there to hear an audience. On the third floor is the Amerlin's office and chambers, along with the Keeper of Chronicles office. Now, during Elida's reign, she moved this up to the top floor of the tower. The top 20 floors of the tower, though, are home to the Ajas. The tower is split into seven pie-shaped sections that run up multiple floors and house each of the Ajas' offices, living quarters, meeting rooms, dining rooms, and whatever the hell else they want. The top of the tower is flat, and it allows views over the city for miles and the distance around the city of Tarvalon, and of course a great view at Dragon Mount. Now, in the basements beneath the tower, there are storerooms, meeting places, Terangrial storage, and even the Terangrial that's used to raise an Aes Sedai to full sisterhood, that's on the very bottom level of the basements. Additionally, in this part of the tower, you will also find the cells for criminals and tons of unused rooms that house things from the 3,000 years of history of the tower's existence. So yeah, the tower has been around a long time. The origins of the White Tower date all the way back to the breaking of the world more than 3,000 years prior to the start of the story. As the breaking was ending, the last male channelers were gone and the world was in pieces. The remaining female channelers and Aes Sedai were also scattered and began to organize themselves into smaller governing groups to attempt to establish some sense of order. In year 47 after the breaking, a meeting was held between the groups of female channelers around the Westlands. There were around 16 factions represented and they agreed to ally into one larger Aes Sedai organization. Once this agreement was made, they decided that a base of operations was needed and they selected a large island right next to Dragon Mount on the River Arenon, and in 98, after breaking, construction was started on the island of Tarvalin, and most importantly, the White Tower. The Aes Sedai brought in Ogier stonemasons to aid in the construction of the island city and the tower, and fused the Ogier's work with the One Power. Construction on Tarvalon and the White Tower were completed in 202 after breaking, and the formal structure of the Aes Sedai was cemented then as it is in the time of the story, with seven Ajas, an Amerlin, and a Keeper. The tower stood for the next 3,300 years, being around through the Trolloc Wars, through the Free Years, ending with the reign of Ardor Hawkwing, which saw Tarvalon besieged for years, and then through the new era that led up to the start of the story. During this time, the White Tower stood as the home to Aes Sedai power, and as the only consistent authority in the world that remained in power throughout the history, with many other nations rising and falling around it.
So the White Tower has been around for a long time, and during that time, it's been attacked a lot. In 335 after breaking, followers of the false dragon Rowland Darkspain attacked the tower in an attempt to free him, even though he'd already been gentled, but they were repulsed by the tower guard. In 1290 after breaking, at the height of the Trolloc Wars, there were four separate assaults on Tarvalon and the White Tower itself, with the fourth attack actually damaging the tower before being repelled by the Amar Linseat herself, presumably using a Sangreal. Now, the tower was besieged for years during the consolidation and reign of Arter Hawkwing's empire, and was damaged during the main storyline when the Shanshan attacked the tower. Entire wall sections were destroyed in the White Tower, and I said I were taken prisoner. So the White Tower is defended, first of all, by the fact that it's on an island with only six entry points by land and two by sea that can be closed in the case of a siege. The River Aranen is miles wide at this point, and the island of Tarvalon sits at the center, which makes it very difficult to attack. The walls surrounding the city are high, and they're reinforced with the One Power, which again makes it very difficult to breach the walls. Additionally, there are walls surrounding the tower grounds themselves and the White Tower complex that can be closed and guarded as well. The White Tower is defended by the Tower Guard, a force of more than 12,000, at peacetime at least, that defend the city, police it as necessary, and patrol the countryside surrounding the White Tower. During times of war, though, the Tower Guard can be increased, as in the events of the novel when the numbers swelled to more than 50,000. So let's go back to all these drawings of the White Tower and the island of Tarvalon. See how massive the tower is in these pictures? Especially the case looking at this shot from the TV show, right? All of them have it wrong. The White Tower, as we've discussed, is quite large, but it's not massively tall. It's 600 feet tall, which is about half the size of the Empire State Building, as we mentioned. But the island that Tarvalon sits on is massive. It's more than eight miles long and almost two miles across, basically the size of Manhattan Island. Rather than completely dominating the island, the White Tower would be nothing but a tall spire in the middle of it. Look at this picture of the Empire State Building taken from the middle of Manhattan Island. Now imagine the tower being half that size, and imagine taking the picture miles away off of the island where you could see the entire thing. It would certainly tower over the city, but it would not take up a huge part of the island. So what are your thoughts on the White Tower? Is there anything cool about the tower that I missed? Let me know in the comments of the video, and of course, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. Make sure to hit the bell icon, as that's the only way YouTube is gonna notify you when more Wheel of Time videos come out. The more of you that hit that bell icon, the better the channel gets watched. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel. This channel isn't large and likely never will be, so support from you is what keeps me doing this. Thank you so much, and if you'd like to become a patron of the channel, check out the link in the description of the video. If you like this video, also check out one of these here that you also might like. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out.